Hey everybody, Haku here with my second review for Ened no Shobotai. I think is the uh, Japanese name, but I'm just calling it Fire Force. Uh, it's much easier to say. So yeah, episode two was a really, really good episode. I may have even liked this one better than the first one. The first one definitely had more insane visuals, more cool fights, but I like that this one delved more into the characters and a little more into the lore in a development type of way, where the first episode threw us into it in just an introductory type of way. Um, I actually thought it was a really good episode. I really liked this one. Um, and like I said, I like the focus on the human side of things a lot. So uh, another thing is I'm really interested in how the lore is going to develop in the future. Again, no spoilers from those of you who read the manga, but I like this world and this setting, and the most interesting thing to me is to see the characters figure out the secrets behind it. Like, where do the Infernals come from? Why are there people who can use fire as power? How is that related to the Infernals? Like, why did this world get start started this way, the way it is? Because um, it hasn't even been that long if it's only three generations of fire soldiers, only a hundred and however many years they said in the first episode. Um, so I'm really interested to see how that's going to develop out over the course of the series. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but somebody actually was saying that this is going to be a 48-episode season. A part of me just wanted it to be a one-core season, and then we take a break, jump in for another core later on for a second season. That way they have plenty of time to keep the production quality up, and I'm just worried about... I love Soul Leader. Soul Leader is one of my favorite series, probably one of the series that got me into anime, but I don't want Fire Force to end up with just a forced, um, a forced anime-only ending, like what, and sort of anime-only direction of the story, like what happened with Soul Eater. I kind of want it to be adapted as it should be, I guess. Um, so I don't know. If they can keep up the production quality and everything, cool, but if this is 48 episodes, I really hope it doesn't hurt the overall quality of the writing and the production. <laughs> Another thing I put in my notes, I don't even remember if I said it last week or not, but I thought it again this week. During the end credits, I always think to myself, I'm like, why are they making these lolly nuns so cute? And then I always think to myself, wow, that is, that is a light novel title. Like, like that sounds exactly like any light novel title. Why are they making these lolly nuns so cute? Um, another thing that I loved about this episode, again, just going through some general thought notes before I break down the episode scene by scene and my thoughts on it. Um, I loved how we were shown how third generations aren't hopelessly OP. Because one thing that can happen in some series, it's like, okay, the main character is super special for insert reason here, and because of that, they're going to be incredibly OP. Like, we know that third generations can create their own flames. That's pretty cool. Second generations can control flames. Who knows what that makes first generations, I guess. But, um, I think it's really, really cool showing with this sort of training fight they had with Maki that, like, when he goes to attack and she turns off his flames, or when she turns their flames into cute little onomatopoeia creatures against them, uh, it shows that second generations can still totally hang with first generations uh, because they can still control flames, obviously, and even if they can't produce their own, they can control the other person's flame, and it's more about skill than just sort of a natural aptitude. Um, so second generations, it doesn't make them hopelessly underpowered, and doesn't make third generations hopelessly overpowered. I like that about it a lot. Um, so yeah, starting from the beginning, some things I thought while watching through the episode a second time. I love the artistic direction that this series takes with a lot of things. With the way, just toward the beginning, when they were showing the skulls and everything, and the sort of cartoonish demons on fire, and they did that last episode, they do it in the opening. I like the way they sort of throw in these flashes of really artistic stuff to just evoke what they're explaining in some sort of emotional or creative way. I like that a lot. Um, 
and also this episode we got to see a little bit of comedy. Now this is more reined in than Soul Eater. It's not just like crazy. It's more grounded than Soul Eater, but I like we got to see a little bit of what the comedy might look like in this series. Uh, and we're introduced to the concept of a potential tournament arc coming up soon. Uh, we even get a new rookie joining the squad, Arthur, who knows Shinra from the Academy. And I actually kind of like Arthur, a lot. At first I wasn't sure how I felt about the character when he first showed up in some of the earlier scenes, but he developed and his character was unraveled bit by bit even throughout the course of the episode. It wasn't just a one-note sort of he thinks of himself as a knight and that's just all there is to his character sort of gag. He was really... He was really explained layer by layer, like an ogre, throughout the um, throughout the episode, and it was done really, really well. Um, another thing I love when Shinra was thinking to himself, walking down the hallway about, I wonder if anybody else in the forest knows about this thing I'm trying to figure out. What happened with the fire when I was a kid? I love the mystery aspect of this, and him going in and trying to figure out what happened. That's, again, one of the most interesting uh, parts of the series to me. Now, we see after the opening sequence, and I love the just cut to the opening we did. Again, I think that was creative. It was different. Uh, we have Puspasa, and um, all of that was cute. One thing that, again, I thought was really good about it, in being artistic, was Iris's visions when she was reaching up to it. And we didn't get to know anything else about that this episode. It just gives us this little bit of development, this little hint of uh, there's something cool going on there, but we're not going to figure out what it is till later. I love that. It was done really well, too. Now, another thing, when we got into this scene where all four of them are on the rooftop, they did something with the direction that I hadn't really seen done this well in anime that I can think of. They used a lot of really quick cuts, and the way cuts are generally used in film and stuff is every time you flash to something else, it's because you're supposed to be presented with a new piece of information, or it's supposed to make you feel some emotional way when they cut to something else. Um, and they did such a great job of cutting around really quickly. There were some just flashes that were only up there for like a quick second, and they all still conveyed new information or new emotion. All the cuts were purposeful and meaningful. It was really, really, really good. Uh, Hinawa comes into the scene. I love Hinawa. He was great. One of my favorite lines, I was laughing so hard when he's like, okay, we'll have you two spar against Maki as training. And she's like, uh, me? Just like, the sort of thing you would expect anime characters to say, and he replies with, Is there anyone else here named Maki? I was dying. That was a really, really good thing. Uh, also, he mentions that she's an ex-soldier, and man, Maki is just so badass. Maki is best girl. She's just so cool. She is so freaking cool. Um, there was also a great small detail I threw in how the small details were good last episode. Another great small detail this episode when Shinra goes to attack, she turns off the flames from his foot, and he starts falling. Again, it was just such a split second, even though I watched the episode twice, I feel like I barely caught it. I'm pretty sure in the window was uh, Obi doing more workouts. So again, I thought that was great. Just the small details that they don't have to throw in makes you like the series even more, because then when you catch them, you're like, oh, I appreciate the small detail being thrown in. It makes you feel better about the show. Uh, so all of that was great. Um, now, Arthur puts his hair up when he goes to do the fight and whatever, and I noticed at this part, I hope he has his hair up a lot more often, because I like his design a lot more that way. I think his design's a lot cooler that way. Uh, and then, then we get Boba Bobo Boba Bo, one of the best manga and anime ever. I don't know if it's a reference to that, um, since obviously it's probably just an onomatopoeia, like Meta Meta or Pispasa. Um, but I love that it was specifically the correct amount of bows. It was Boba Bobo Boba Bo. Bo, 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 Bo. Um, so that was great. I loved it, because the second I heard it, I was like, oh my god, Boba 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 Bo. Bo, Bo, Bo. Um, from there, a bit goes on. We get to see more of uh, Obi and Hinawa with the two new recruits. We get uh, our first weapon for Shinra. He's going to... Because it makes sense. 
to have a weapon other than your fire usage and stuff. He has the Type 7 Axe that shoots out a Sacred Spike, and again, like I said the first episode, I don't yet quite understand the purpose of the prayer or everything that's going on here, but there seems to be some sort of thing where, I guess if you just stabbed a, um, I guess if you just stabbed an infernal with a normal sword, it wouldn't really do anything. The prayer is a part of what's important. The gear they use is a part of what's important, like the sacred spikes. Uh, so there's some sort of importance to it, even though I don't fully understand it yet. Um, there is something there. Uh, Obi tells them not to display their weapons in public. Uh, and then this poor, cute anime girl. Someone protect this poor, cute anime girl. I felt so bad for her, and I, I feel even worse knowing we're probably not going to see her again. It was probably just a random throwaway, not even side character, just background character, really. Um, from there, he explains after they sort of pull out their weapons in front of her and he's scolding them, he kind of explains how they're really just killing... <laughs> they're really... We don't get to hear it, but we can assume, obviously, they're really just killing the, uh, the Infernals. Uh, but it feels like putting people to rest, killing the Infernals, is the right thing to do. So we don't know if there's going to be some kind of cure if you can save people from being Infernals. And we don't really know that much about Infernals in general. Like, is there some way that they can regain senses, become more humanoid, become more powerful? Who knows? Uh, and then some sort of blast power goes off. We see a face in the flames. Later on with that guy, we see a face in a smoke that's somewhat similar. I have no idea what's going on there. But it doesn't seem to do anything. The Infernal's just sitting around, and they act as if that's very unusual. So did it somehow calm down the Infernal? I'm not, I'm not really sure what it did yet. Uh... So it makes me think, with this guy who had the powder with him and stuff, he's obviously seemingly some sort of antagonist, but is the antagonist going to be, or the antagonist group, sort of going to be some sort of sane Infernals? Is it possible for Infernals to become sane, to take on human appearances, or are they people that use the power that the fire soldiers use for their own motives? Because that would make total sense. Because it's like... If you had the power to control fi I brought up in the first episode, I was like, why do they worship flames and the sun and everything if the flames and sun are killing them? Wouldn't they view them as evil? But, um... It's one of those situations where if they had fire powers, sure, some of them would use them to fight the monsters, the infernals and all that, but some people would just use them for their own sort of reasons, for their own greed, for their own purposes. And... Because of that, I mean, I, some people might just want to watch the world burn, quite literally. Um, so I wonder if these are going to be some sort of sane infernals, or if they're going to be just people with fire soldier powers who can use their powers for their own motives. Um, and it also made me think, what's beyond a... Um, the way that this guy was controlling things, what's beyond a third generation? Who's to say he's not some ancient fifth generation? Uh, we don't know how any of this lore is going to play out. Uh, but yeah, either way, he seems like he had a reason. The way he talked about the Fire Force, uh, and the way he was like, oh, it was just a joke, it feels like he had a reason for what he did. So again, there's just so much lore to get into that we're not privy to yet. Uh, another good detail that I love that they threw in was before they exited the house, the show took time to show Arthur looking at his sword, putting it in his jacket, and composing himself before going out to where the girl could see them again, and I loved that development. Uh, the compassion shown there, but also showing compassion in the final scene where they're in bed and he's talking to Shinra, uh, pretty much trying to comfort him while still maintaining his air of, oh, I'm the, I'm the knightly king, or the knight king, I'm, I'm, a." Uh, better than you and you're a devil, but it's not proper of me to kill you in your sleep. And he's keeping up that facade while still showing care for Shinra as a person. So it made me really like his character more, how he was developed and things were revealed about him throughout the episode. Uh, and yep, that's it for the episode itself. One thing that definitely stood out to me 
was the direction. Rewatching it, the direction is insanely good. And that's something I often don't pay too much attention to because it's just straight down the middle. If bad direction's there, you'll notice. If good is there, you'll notice, I guess. But I usually don't take much notice because it's no matter if it's a good series or a bad series, the direction itself is usually pretty straight down the middle. Uh, it's pretty uniform. It's like, okay, this is how anime is done. But this stood out as being different, and it was really, really good. So, uh, yeah, I loved it, and I'd give it 9 living flames out of 10, like Pispasu. Um, 9 out of 10, I really enjoyed the episode a lot, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it, too. Like if you did like the video, and comment down there to tell me what you thought of this episode and what you thought of my thoughts on it and all that. Subscribe for more, Fire Force much more on the channel, follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel or talk to you there. And if you want a link to our Discord server to talk to me or more of us there about anything, it's free and open for anyone, just ask and I can give you a link. That's it, thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.